Hiya folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal at Krondor, and when last we left off, we are back outside of Sarth, and now we have the maps we need to get through the caves beneath Sarth, so that we can get into the monastery, and get the information we need to figure out where the Book of Macross is, or if it's not actually a book like we've been told by the Oracle, where we need to go. So let's step forward. The path turned. After a few minutes of travelling, the roadbed began a steady rise, spiralling around the base of a sheer, rock-faced hill. Sarth, Owen said. We probably have enough time to drop in for a brief visit, and it might break up the monotony of the road. Want to take a look around? Yes, but we're not going via the conventional route. We're going this way. Trees whipped at their faces, mumbling at the inconvenience of castle engineers, Owen led the way down the fur-covered slope, arriving at last at the mouth of a large cave. Told you I wasn't mad, he muttered. Looks like a cave mouth. Want to have a look inside? We do! They made their way into the blackness. Now, it's dark, which means we want to get some light. Where is our... Not here. Where's candle glow? There's candle glow. We want a longish candle glow. There we go. Let's get going and move forward. Now we're gonna have to be careful because this place is probably inhabited by something nasty. So forward we go. There is a door here. It's locked up tight. What kind of lock? Uh, we're gonna have to pick this. Fortunately, we have a hundred lot picks, so that is easy. Hi, spiders! We're set then. Let's just hope our advance is undetected or our advantage will be lost. Let's go! The creatures howled! Two spiders! Not really the most dangerous things we've ever faced, but you know what? Still gotta treat them with a healthy amount of respect, because spiders are nasty! Haven't they? Our armor's pretty good, but we can still get hit. They don't poison. But there we go. The battle was won. The party's accuracy melee has improved. That's both of us. 88% and 72%. Not bad at all. There is here a uh, small fire. I wonder- ooh! There's a dead person here. I wonder if we should have come here earlier. Well, what do we have here? Five rations? I mean, I'll take two rations? Actually, take all the rations. There is a single torch. We have 25 there, and rope. You know what? We'll take the rope. Does that put us one over? I will put this rope back, but we will definitely take the other rope and apply the poison. Always reapply that poison. Right. On as we go. And... Heading south. At least I think that's the way we want to go. Yes, that is the way we want to go. South is a... new direction. Watch this dungeon not be very big. It, it might not be very big. Carefully does it. I'm just glad we don't have to watch out for traps. So that's fine, and let's go this way first. Now well, let's not just rush straight into a pit. There's a door. Probably locked. Yep. And Gorath will easily deal with this. I mean, if we couldn't pick it, that would be terrible. Ooh! There are giant scorpions down here! Their advantage was lost. Holding up a hand to halt the advance, Owen contemplated a new course of action while his stomach tied itself in knots. As many times as he had found himself in a fight, he never could shake the feeling, the strange feeling he was about to die. I mean, healthy amount of caution. Yep, giant scorpions! Right, uh, how about thee? We need to take care of these scorpions quickly. That's one down. And you can start hitting this one. Ha-ha! These scorpions are comically huge. Comically huge scorpions, but you know what? I can deal with them. Even Owen can deal with them. So let's, uh, have at thee. And dead. 
Oh, and strength ability has increased. You are now strength 22. That's uh, pretty strong. They are very dead. There are chests here. They are locked, but we don't know if they're trapped. So let's get a scent of Sarig going. Uh, yep, that's trapped. We will try and deactivate it. Of course you will. We have a hundred trap finding. That was a terrible reward. Re oh, it's a lockbox. It's a lockbox. A box beneath a tree, inside some tasty meat, kept for a month or more. It still tastes just as sweet. This is some kind of fruit or nut. And I think it's a walnut. That was a pretty obvious riddle. What's our reward? It is a shell and some Luton's Concentrate. You know what? Take the Luton's Concentrate. We don't need it, but... Uh, ooh, that, that did scare me a little bit there. Uh, just a little bit of a... Oh, wait, there's a thing. Oh, wait, that's actually a thing we've already seen. But uh, let's go this way. The good thing about these dungeons is that it very obviously shows you what the exit is, so you're not going to accidentally stumble into the way out without uh, exploring everything. Uh, what's over here? A long passageway. Okay. Diverging path. Locked door? Of course. Ooh. Different shaped lock. Probably more challenging to open, but not that difficult for... Oh dear! Well, we just... Oh, it's only two spiders. I was like, oh no! Wait, two spiders. Not a problem. Really not a problem. I should have moved so that you could actually attack. This is fine. It's, it's really fine. Like, we can kill these super easy. We should have come here a lot sooner. But we're not doing badly. Even with us uh, coming here. All right, there is a body. Somebody clearly tried to loot here before. And there's... Okay. That's actually not bad loot. We do want some more herbal uh, pouches. What about this? Another lockbox. Oh, it's a two-word one. Two brothers wanted to race a course to see which had the slowest horse. Since neither wanted to spur his mare, what must they do to make it fair? What must they do to make it fair? Huh. Hmm. I'm thinking about this one. Two brothers wanted to race a course. Hang on, hang on, this is... What words can I make? I was thinking like, wait, I have an idea. No, I don't. Tra? Oh, okay. Trade horses. If they... If they were worried the other one was going to cheat, you just trade horses. Yep, and that's it. Okay, ooh, okay, we have a sort of kinner here. That's not a bad piece of loot. A fully intact suit of grey tower plate is also pretty nice. I like those rewards. Okay, we need to... There's clearly something up there that we probably want to... Oh, we need rest that we want to backtrack and get, so let's... Camp until healed. There's really no reason to not camp until healed because uh, the fact that we're in a dungeon. Let's get some more candle glow going. Dean, let's back up. There was a way I did not go. And it's down there. Let's go back to that first and then keep heading down the other path. Because I think this way does not lead to progress. And this is when this way does lead to progress. Oh. Yeah, that's a dead end. 
That's not a ladder, that's a dead end. Worth checking, just in case. Right, back this way. That great tower plate would have been really useful earlier in the game. Oh well. We've got it now, and now it's effectively just cell fodder. I'll take it though. This is the way out. Okay, th or more accurately, the way up into Sarth proper. And then it's not the way up to Sarth proper, and we get sad as we go into phase two of the dungeon with 500 horrible creatures. Owen disappeared up the stairs. He returned a minute later, a look of grim determination evident on his face. These stairs must lead to the Mac Orglane Dock Emerald Mine. The tunnels are very complicated. With the instructions we found in Stellan's house, we should be able to make it through. Shall we try to find the, the library vaults? Yes! Gorath nodded. Together, they climbed the moss-covered stone stairway that led to the mines. Bits of rock and splintered wood covered the dirt floor, making it difficult for them to walk. But they picked their way through the rubble, and after nearly an hour, came to a wrought iron ladder, piercing a dark hole in the ceiling. The rungs were rusty, and metal splinters ripped at their hands and snagged their clothes, as though trying to deny them egress from the mines as they climbed upward. The ladder ended up in a small wooden hallway, thick with dust and decorated with silky strands of spiderweb. A door at the end of the hall opened, after some effort, into a huge room stuffed with books. They had been heard. Assembled in the book-lined passage were six priests, all keenly interested in the arrival of the two strangers. But amidst them, a broad-shouldered priest stepped forward. Your presence may explain a great deal, the priest said, stabbing a finger in their direction. We have been unable to leave the vault since this morning, and we found the door is bolted from the other side. And since I find it unlikely that our brother priests of Ishop have chosen to starve us to death, it's not like that at all, Owen replied, waving his hands. We ran into your brother Mark when we came up the road. He said that one of your brethren has fallen ill with a quaky and fever, and somehow his condition is linked to the passages being blocked. The mystic defenses, one of the other priests offered. It is possible his delusions may have triggered them. Quickly, a debate ensued between the road priests, finishing at last with several brethren scurrying off to shelves assigned for their examination. With a stern look, the angered priest also pointed to a shelf and directed that Owen and Gorath look for anything that mentioned the mystic defenses of Sarth or the outbreaks of Kegian fever. Hours passed. His eyes aching from reading the nearly illegible handwriting of ancient scribes, Owen leaned his head back against the ancient shelving. I have no idea what we're looking for, Gorath. I've run across a half dozen references to this abbey, but then I discover it has something to do with experiments with peas or an account of a new system of organizing these books. A sound drew their attention. At the end of the book's strewn passageways in which they sat, a priest eyed the disorganization with distress. Why are you still down here? Looking for an answer, Owen said. Vaguely he gestured at a half dozen open books around him. Haven't found it. Oh. Biting his lip, the priest seemed pensive about continuing. Well, I'm afraid we solved that problem about an hour ago. Brother Dominic is doing a little better now. We were wondering where you two had gotten to. Angered, Owen slammed shut the cover of the book, which he held in his lap, a translation of Dorcas's treatise on the animation of objects. Likewise next to him, Gorath stuffed away a wormy-looking book on history. Keep it, the priest insisted before Owen could put away the magical treatise. Dorcas is popular here. We have other copies cross-indexed in the library. I was also instructed that once I found you, I was to reward you with these. Opening a pouch, the priest handed them nearly three perfect emeralds. They are yours, in appreciation for all you have done. It is a small gesture, but I hope a useful one. Please feel free to continue to scan our library if it pleases you. Right, so we got emeralds, and we got in, and... Healer's journals that are the shelf. Um, unfortunately, much of the book had been said it was confusing or contradictory. Uh, so, yep, not that one. Can I read these ones? Yeah, we still can't read that. Okay. Uh, Owen scowled. These books are right before him, more concerned theories of finance, a subject which his father long ago exhaustedly bored him with. While he thought he would never again be interested in the subject, he found himself reaching for the volumes. Uh, yep, no. Uh, this is on um, Basic Soldier's Text. Fair enough. Weaknesses and resistances. Uh, overburdened. About Kahuli. Uh, Owen pulled down a book. 
A text of interest? Gorath asked, looking over his shoulder. Owen tapped the words on the spine. It's a journal written by Pug, titled Regarding Theories of Transspatial Gateways Proposed by Macross. Do you believe this is the book we, which we seek? Responding only with a shrug, Owen began to leaf through its pages, discovering immediately the majority of it was a technical document, filled with diagrams and columns of numbers with notations off to the side in a curious shorthand. Whatever the book contained was far more advanced than any of the things he had read on magic thus far. He might as well be writing in Keshian, Owen said, shaking his head. While searching for an index, he discovered a small addendum which related a few of his conversations with Macross. This is interesting. Something to help us find Pug? Gorath questioned. No, but something that might lead us to someone who might know something about this book of Macross, Owen replied with excitement. It says here that someone named Thomas Megason of Elvandar once travelled with he and Macross. Perhaps this Thomas fellow would know something about Macross or his book. Smiling grimly, Gorath's eyes held a dark humour. You intend that we should enter Elvandar? They will not be well pleased to see the likes of me. Why is that? Owen asked, putting the book back on the shelf. The kin of Queen Aglarana and those of my blood are enemies of old. None enter Ilvander itself save those sworn to her, or are considered the most intimate of friends, he said. It will not be an easy journey. Chuckling, Owen patted Gorath on the back. After the, last, after the past few months, I can't imagine this trip being all that difficult. Besides, we'll be back close to where we met near Lamut. I believe there may be a way through to Ilvander near there. Okay, so the game has once again told us, go here. Owen scowled. As much as I'd like to keep what we found, we can barely manage with what we have already. Check your rucksacks. Oh, you gave me a treatise and... All right, we need to get rid of some things. Um, Okay, get rid of some things, get rid of some things. What don't we need? We don't need this. And if we pass this over to you... We can take this, and we can take that. Excellent. We have more than enough space now, and we just dropped some uh, Fatima's formula. Right. Uh, rest until morning. We need to go... Brother Mark, hove into view. Like a moth to a candle flame. No, we're okay. We managed to get in. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. We got back it right. Let us go to Krondor, because we have some things to sell. And we definitely want to make some inventory space. Meow! Zooming along at the speed of Gorath and Owen. Where are we? We are getting... We're probably quite a... We're still a little ways away. Still a little ways away. We should get there before it gets too dark. Yes, we will get there before it gets too dark. But uh, not by much. Not by much. Uh, I meant to click this button. So, here we are. Crondor. We want to sell some things here at Touchstone Gems. Three perfectly... It, well, they're perfect emeralds. 384. 372. 360. And a shell. Two. Okay, that's all fine. And we want to sell these weapons as well. Back here, I sell. We'll sell this for 109, and this sword for 122. Very nice. Also, this is a book on. Uh, I think this is. I don't remember what a Dorcas's treatise is for. So I'm actually going to save and have a look, because this could be something I actually want to read. Uh, okay. A magician. Oh, is this a is this a spell learning one? Oh, this is totally a spell uh, casting one. I don't think we want that one. I really don't think we want that. Like, I don't think this is a book we want. Can we sell it? Can we sell this book? Let's find out. Do you want my book on magic? 109 sovereigns. Hmm. 109 so I want to be absolutely sure that this is for... Ma 
magic, though. So I'm actually going to look it up. I I don't remember if this is magic, because if it is magic, it, it's it's useless. And we'd rather have the 100 sovereigns. Uh, yeah, plus accuracy spell casting. It is not a useful thing for me, because we have a 100 accuracy spell casting. So... We'll just sell it for an extra 100 sovereigns, putting us to 14,473. It is... it is ridiculous how much we have. It is ridiculous. So, we leave. And when we come back, folks, actually... We could make our journey a little faster... with a bit of teleporting. We could go to the Temple of Killian, which is close to Lamut. 90 sovereigns? Zoom! That's much faster. Considering we've cleared out all the enemies already, we're not going to gain much by going um, on foot. And so, when we come back, folks, I think I know where we need to go. Like, we won't be able to go to... Actually, now that I think about it, the reason why there's new dialogue in Lamut is because the game forces you into that area anyway. Huh. So it wasn't just stuff added for the sake of it being added. You're gonna come here anyway, but I think I know how we are going to make headway. And that involves the Makmorden Kadal. Remember they were clearing stuff out? Maybe they finally made a path through. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks. But when we come back, checking the Makmorden Kadal. And hopefully, there'll be a way forward for us. Fingers crossed. I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.